here's my take on it, and you can deride this, and you can uh, do what you like. You can unsubscribe if you don't like it, and you know you can call me uh, whatever you want. But my take on it is that the British state, whether you like it or not, has a foreign policy, and like the West, every country has a foreign policy. They're always going to spend money. Um, on foreign adventure, whether you like it or not. Now, in my entire lifetime, I have never known the British deep state and America and whatever, th th this group, I've never known them do anything that supported the interests of a European nationalist state. And um, I realize some people will just start braying at that and they'll start going on about Zelensky. Well, I'm just telling you about what it is in Ukraine. Ukraine is, it's effectively 100% white. It, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I describe it as, the, you know, the most European country on earth, and I think it is. Um, there's, there's nowhere on the world in the world where, like, nationalism is just sewn into the national character. Um, or the national fabric, I should say, as it is in Ukraine. It's everywhere. Like, and I'm not talking like, you know, bulldog nationalism, or like the, its equivalent in Russia, which is like strong like bear nationalism. And I mean, that's another point I can maybe talk about later. The, like, the, the, the same people that cry about like, you know, bulldog nationalism, um, you know, spitfire nationalism and all this stuff. The same people that cry about that, they then have spent the last two years getting completely sucked in by, like, strong like bear nationalism. And I'll tell you what, strong like bear nationalism, when I, when I say that, that is basically, like, the Russian uh, inverted commas uh, kind of, and it is very, very big inverted commas nationalism. It's all based on the World War II narrative, their World War II narrative. Which you will end up, you've got five years in prison if you question that narrative, literally. That's, that's a law. Like, if you do anything to, inverted commas, question or denigrate the World War II narrative in Russia, five years in prison. You know, and you won't have a PlayStation in your cell. So, I mean, this kind of strong like bear nationalism, this is bulldog nationalism on basically 1980s Soviet Union uh, steroids. Like, it is webbed in with the, 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 the deep state there. Not even deep state, you don't, you don't even call it deep state, do you? The police state, the FSB. Like, you know, if you cross that, as I say, you'll end up in prison. Uh, if, you're, if you want to be an ethno-nationalist in Russia and, and come out with a lot of things that these dissident right people like to trot out in the West while like crying about how oppressed they are, um, if you did that in Russia, you'd go to prison. I did this on another video, I'm not going to labor the point, but they jailed 8,000 ethno-nationalists in the last 12 years. And uh, many of the, the leaders, um, you know, they, they, they went to their death in prison, in a prison cell, mysteriously, in a gang fight. So that, that's kind of what happens. Um, I think it's chalked up as a gang, gang fight, just to be clear there, uh, the inference made. So, um, as I was saying, basically, like the in Ukraine, like nationalism is kind of, you know, it is embodied in the national fabric in a way that it isn't. Certainly in a European country, and uh, this is the one time that the British, British, like foreign policy is correlated with defending that against uh, Russia, which is. I'm not going to go off about Russia now because it's just not worth it. Like anyone who's watched this channel probably knows what I think about Russia. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a police state. It's explicitly Antifa. Like literally, they hold and an, they hold Antifa conferences, international Antifa conferences. What they're doing in Mariupol and in occupied Ukraine is absolutely disgusting. They they have ethnically cleansed those areas of of Ukrainians. And they are filling like the the houses, um, or they're filling the towns with people from Central Asia. It's absolutely disgusting. And 
you can talk about like uh, the great replacement there's nowhere on earth that that is happening in such rapid dramatic effect as the occupied regions of ukraine it is absolutely disgusting you know you've had people who've had to flee from their home you know with the russian army like you know a kilometer away and they've had to just grab a bag and grab their families and jump in the car and just just fucking hit the gas and you know they've got Uzbekis living in their houses because they come in as construction workers, guest workers, and they're granted like these empty properties. So at some point, some Uzbeki or Turkmeni or Chechen or Azeri or whatever they are, because actually like Slavic Russians don't want to live there. Like, you know what I mean? No one wants to go there. It's, it's kind of like an active war zone. So the only people who are kind of desperate enough is the people who come from Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and they, they try and get a visa into Russia, which is pretty fucking easy these days because he reversed it. Putin reversed it a year ago, made it incredibly easy. But what they're doing now, they just bust them straight in. They say, OK, yeah, you want a visa, you get a visa, you go here. We'll give you a flat, we'll give you a visa, we'll give, we give you a job. So these, these Ukrainians that have had to flee and leave their homes, which maybe they've had for 50 years or whatever, how, you know, been in the family for who knows what. At some point, a bunch of Tajiks have come in with black bin liners and they've come around your house and they've like just slung everything out and, in in, you know, picked through, see, see, see if they've got anything you, you know, you fancy, which you couldn't carry off with you. Um, you know, it's, it's absolutely disgusting. And the one time, as I say, the one time that the West, you know, normally we're off in Iraq, you know, Afghanistan, like these kind of places. You know, that's where your money's going, and a huge amount more of money is going. Because you're not actually spending this, you know. America has spent 5% of its annual uh, military budget defending Ukraine. 5% of its annual military budget. You would think that, you know, you would think that these people in America are, like, literally having the food, like, pulled out of their mouths, which would, wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. But, you know, that is how you know, absurd. Everything is now. 